Lady Arathina. I know you are Vanny. You were sending me those. I don't lie, Cerise. I don't lie. I don't lie. I think you can send a message to Barry and she will let you know. You can send a message to Barry. Remember, if you guys find Leonardo da Vinci, and Leonardo here does not count. This is this is the cartoonified version of Leonardo. Did you guys see the balloon in my Discord that Sharp Balloons made of me? Uh, she had one more speed balloon to do, and, and she's like, okay, let's put it out for a vote. What does everybody want to do? And everybody just started typing in Canar, and I was like, oh my gosh, you guys. She made a balloon of me. I was so excited. I was so excited. Thank you, Barry. Why does it have to be so hot? Right now, it's nice. It's still overcast. You guys want to see what it looks like outside? There you go. That's, how, that's my outside view. Wait, does it still look like that? Yeah. <laughs> I had to go, it's like, wow. It's like, so that, that's, our out, that's our outside view. The mountains are glorious. They're, I love, I love. Sharp Balloons is incredible. She is so, I have, you know, when you think of a balloon artist, you think of the typical thing when you go to the fair, you go to the circus. And when you see hers, mind-blowing when I saw the picture I went on her Instagram and looked at the one of the golden girls I was like well that's it I'm hooked I am hooked I'm, I'm hanging out here forever she is I can't say that word though 90 oh yeah I was singing that song in somebody's stream the other day. They're like, how do you know that song? Because it's on my playlist. <laughs> okay, we're going to make our mustard. So we are going to mix our water, our dry mustard, salt, turmeric, garlic, and paprika in a small saucepan. And we're going to... You have to exclusively play Riding Dirty when you do your mowing streams. That's see me rolling. <laughs> That'd be a good one. That would be, you saw David Gutera, Gutera, wow. Words, Kanara, words. How did you manage that, Tia? 94 in Denver, gadzooks. Gadzooks, 94. That is way too hot. That is way too hot. Oh, I'm gonna sneeze, hang on. Lady Arathita, how are you doing today? Oh, oh my nose, okay. Oh, excuse me. Okay, I'm gonna live, I'm gonna live. Oh. Okay, no AC. He was in Finland, nice. Oh. Okay, this is too hot. Let me, let me run some cold water on the back of this just to kind of cool this down. One thing about metal, it'll cool down real quick. All right, we need one cup of cold water. And what we're doing is that we're blooming, we're blooming the, not we're rehydrating the dry ingredients that we're going to be putting in here. So I'm going to put in my water first so that nothing sticks to the bottom of the pan. Couldn't live without AC. We had a, we had swamp coolers down in Southern California. Never really liked them. We have an air conditioning up here, but I very rarely turn it on. I think we've turned it on a total of maybe 12 times in the last 12, 13 years. So yeah. I didn't want my vacation in Montana to end. Big skies. What part of Montana were you in, Lady Arathina? I really liked Billings area. If you want to go into like a, like a big city area, Billings is, Billings is where I go. All right. So we're going to, oh, wait. We're going to, no, we're going to, we're going to reduce this. Because I am not going to use a three-quarters cup of my mustard in there because that's all mustard I have. So we're going to do half of this. We're going to do half of this. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so I seen like, the lead singer of Europe while you were in Stockholm some years ago. That's pretty neat. I just sat down and I forgot. I can't forget anything. Okay, hang on here. We need, oops. Okay. 
So we're going to need a quarter cup and two tablespoons. Oh, 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 Eclair, you thank you so much for the resub. Six months. Thank you for that. All right, so a quarter cup and two tablespoons. I'm stealing his quarter cup because his is dry. He just uses, I've got to go, but I hope you have a good stream and day. Thank you so much, Misty. I appreciate that. Do, 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 do. Found Leo, Belle, look at you, getting an eagle eye over there. All right. I see that I have messages popping up on, <clears throat> on Twitch. I will check those as soon as stream is over. You can also send me messages in Discord. I, oh wait, I still need two tablespoons. When we went to uh, Montana and, oh, we, in Wyoming, we got one heck of a, a, a storm going through Wyoming. Oh my gosh, I gotta rinse this out too. So one quarter cup plus two tablespoons. That's gonna be half of three quarters cup. Because we're not, I'm not doing the whole thing. I gotta order some more mustard. Exclamation point spices. And that is who I order through. We're all wild. Yeah. My first one's on my on my back. I don't know if I'll be able to show that one. All right, so this is our water and our mustard. This is gonna be very, very viscous right now. You can see it's gonna be very liquidy. We're gonna to add to this our salt, which we're doing everything here in half. So I'm going to do, I'm just gonna do a good pinch of salt. A little bit more than that. We need a quarter of a teaspoon of turmeric. Again, turmeric is a yellow spice. But it will, it can darken up. Look at you guys just dropping the points in there. Jeepers creepers. Quarter teaspoon of turmeric, because we're doing this all in half. An eighth of a teaspoon of paprika. That is cayenne. Always read it twice, because this wants a quarter of a, an eighth of a teaspoon. So we're going to go with just basically a pinch, because it wants an eighth. So we're only going to do, oops, get out of there. And we're going to do a quarter cup of distilled vinegar. And we're not going to do the distilled vinegar quite yet. Two thousand, two thousand, two hundred and fifty, two thousand. 4,000. Shayna, Hungry Wolf. Hang on, let me. Oh. Okay. My nose is over here running. Saya dropping 2,000 points. Lady, Lady Arathena dropping 2,000 points. Dr. Green is in the house. Hungry Wolf. Oh my gosh, you guys. I really thought this was going to take several weeks for you guys to do these, these points. I really thought it was going to take a while. Dr. Green, gosh dang. Oh, I didn't turn this light on over here. Dr. Green. Okay, so now we have all this. Oh, I got to get my garlic in here. So this wants one teaspoon. We're going to do an eighth of a teaspoon of garlic powder because um, I don't want to sit here and mess with. But again, I'm only going to do half because It is, it is, um, Abdulis, it's a very good thing for inflammation. But remember, everything in moderation, and if you're taking medications, always check with a licensed nutritionist or your pharmacist, because some foods can actually counteract what a prescription drug is that you're taking. Like, if there's a, uh, there's a uh, I think it's an anticoagulant drug or whatever, that you can't have broccoli 
or anything like high in vitamin K or something like that. Okay, so we're just breaking this all up. So we're going to cook this over a medium low heat. I can already smell that mustard coming into play. And this is why you want it very aerated. We're gonna kind of get that down to a paste. And once it comes down to a paste, we're gonna add in our vinegar, which is gonna be a quarter cup of distilled vinegar that we're gonna be putting in there. And then we're gonna cook this down to a paste, which is gonna take about 30 or 45 minutes. So while that's doing its thing, we might as well do, we might as well work on our, um, get our chicken ready to go. What do you say? What do you say? Where's my water over here? You can't have grapefruit, there you go. Uh, hungry well, people were dropping 20K on Sunday, 20,000 points into that. It's craziness. The grapefruit, yeah, the grapefruit is, is one of the, and I'm glad I don't like grapefruit. All right, let's get out our chicken. So for those, if, you know, if chicken goes on sale, ding, we like that good vibe stuff. If chicken goes on sale, buy it. If you see chicken on sale, buy it. But you know, if it's just you or just two of you, and you don't, you don't want to freeze like the whole chicken, um, you can just freeze half of it. You can spatchcock it and just freeze half of it. It's that thing that you do when you want to do. It's your thing. Do what you want to do. Wait, what did I miss? Oh, the grapefruit thing. Yeah, the grapefruit thing. Oop, hiccup. Sorry about that. We're doing all the condiments today. No goes to Bobby. No. So if you're going to do a whole chicken, this is the chicken I just cut in half. So this would be like, so you guys understand the chicken. This would be like one half of the chicken, right? And the other half of the chicken was here. I turned it over. I took my shears and I cut up one side of the spine. Then you cut up the other side of the spine. You take the spine out and then you lay it down and you completely flatten it. And then you can just take a paper towel. It's very hard to do with your bare hands. It's very slippery. And then you pull out. The only thing I didn't do, I didn't take out the, uh, the wishbone. It's, st it's still in there. But take out the, the breastbone and you can just cut it right at the center and then you have a half a chicken. You can roast it just like this if you wanna have like a nice roast chicken instead of doing like the entire thing. I'm gonna say I found Leo even if I'm wrong. So we can leave this. So you're gonna follow your lines. Follow your lines when you're, so do you see this line of fat right here? Do you guys see that nice little that's the line you're going to use. That's the line you're going to cut to separate the breast up here from the thigh. And then you have the leg. Now, if you want to separate the leg from the thigh, follow the fat. A lot of people think it's up here and it's not. It's actually here. Follow. This is a roadmap. Follow these lines of fat. This is your roadmap for breaking these things down. I can't type today. Hopefully that makes sense. It builds up in the medicine. Yes, that is true. And it's, um, there's other foods that will react with that. So always make sure that, particularly before you start any type of fad diet, make sure that if they're having to eat specific foods or, or whatever. Okay, even though this is toxic to smell, if you want to get too close to it, it's already starting to smell pretty darn good. Pass it out from seeing the naked chicken. You don't like, you don't, does, does raw meat bother you? I always like to ask. I always like to ask. I, sh I should have actually make a wish. So here we're going to, we're just going to follow that line. And this is going to separate the leg from the breast meat. I'm not going through any bone yet. And when you carve, if you guys ever carve up a rabbit, remember rabbit's uh, hind legs aren't attached the way chicken legs are. So it carves up totally different. So this one, we're going to follow this. We're going to follow that fat line. Oops. Come down. I should have left this. No, get off there. We're going to take this off. I don't need that. Okay. 
Oops, hang on, I gotta stir that. Yeah, it's a sous vide machine. So the, I have um, a couple of eggs in there that we're cooking down. We're gonna use those to make the mayonnaise. If they don't work out, I will use a raw egg to make the mayonnaise, but I will not be eating the raw mayonnaise. I won't be eating that mayonnaise. That's one thing I, I won't, I won't eat. I won't eat raw chicken. I won't eat anything. I'm gonna cut this piece off right. Oh, I can just get my, my scissors. I don't need to. Still, it, I will tell you, you get a good sous vide. Once you get your sous vide going, check and make sure that it's holding temperature. Make sure that if you're supposed to be at 131 degrees, that your instant read thermometer says 131 degrees. Because hopefully you've calibrated your thermometers so you understand that they're, they're reading at the right temperature. There we go. And I think I will leave. We're gonna take this out. Don't want that little bone in there. Seventy-three percent. Oh. Now I'm gonna, I know I'm taking off a lot of the breast meat with this, this cut that I'm doing here. Here we go. Um, come on, get out of there. Get out of there. There we go. Because I wanna have a little bit more meat on this wing so it doesn't overcook when I'm cooking up the rest of the chicken. So we just have our little pieces here and I am gonna cut this in half. otherwise that's not going to cook the same. It's your fate. Accept it. I know that, but I didn't think it was going to happen this fast. That's the whole thing. I didn't think it was going to happen this fast at all. Take off the rest of that supporting rib cage there. Follow your bone lines. There we go. Gourmet Chef Panda! Oh my gosh. Raiders, welcome on in. Panda, how are you doing? Can we get a huge shout out for Panda? I'm just taking that little taking that little wishbone out. Now we have this beautiful piece of breast meat here. And I'm gonna cut this in half. Panda, how was your stream? How was business today? I hope it wasn't too crazy for you. How was your back holding up? Turn that down a little bit. So as you guys can see, this is starting to get, we're making condiments here today, guys. Hang on, I've got, I've got chicken guts on this hand. So this is gonna be a homemade mustard, a homemade yellow mustard. We've already got our barbecue basting stuff going. Panda, panda, panda. You guys, follow Panda. He is so delightful. He is the epitome of a gentleman. He's in there cooking in a live kitchen. So you guys can see, remember I told you guys, I don't have the restaurant experience and the tips and tricks you learn working in a restaurant and the environment that he does when those tickets start popping, fun to watch, fun to watch. But they're cooking up such good food in there. Hopefully uh, next year, oh, Dan is here with an 11 month sub. Dan, thank you. Thank you so much. But definitely go follow him. But Raiders, welcome on in. I am Kanara and I am a food and drink streamer here on Twitch. Ooh, let's get rid of that. And today, like I said, we're doing all condiments. We're making our own homemade ketchup. We're making our own homemade ranch. We're making our own homemade mustard. We're making our own homemade mayo. I do have some eggs over there. They're in the sous vide uh, machine doing a home pasteurization. If they don't come out the way I want, I'll just use regular eggs, but I won't eat them because it'll be raw, raw eggs. And then we're also gonna make a barbecue sauce. We have all the stuff going on over there. Oh, Dan, not you too, Dan, not you too. Well, I'm gonna... this will help these cook a little bit more even, but I'm gonna take the skin off of the, the chicken. We're gonna take the skin off the chicken. I'm gonna cook up that little, why did that little piece come off? Oh, it was on the bottom. Dan, what is new with you? Can we get an exclamation point LL, please? Dan, you will see him on Twitter. You'll see him in his, in his channel. 
doing marathons and running, raising money for the Leukemia Society because his wife, Kelly, was diagnosed back in 2018 and underwent all the treatment, all the treatment, and hallelujah, fought that stuff off. That's a, but always raising money to, uh, what's, what's Derek and his mustache up to today? He's on an appointment today. He should be back. He should be back here probably about an hour. There it is right there. So if you guys want to donate to a, a wonderful charity, there you go. That is a charity to donate to right there. Always working on research, you know, to make sure that we don't have these horrible blood cancers anymore. And um, Panda is also, Panda lives in Belgium. And Panda also has his own charity. Panda, if you want to send that charity link over to one of my mods, they can get that posted. He actually raises funds to help the homeless in the area and, and make food and, and feed these people and, and treat them with dignity and respect, which I think is just huge. Just huge. All the good vibes up in here. 11 months, four days, and 23 hours. Pretty soon it's gonna be 11 months, five days. Yeah, Panda, if you're still in here, please definitely. Sometimes Panda comes in and raids and then they've gotta get the kitchen cleaned up. And we all know what it's like to clean up our kitchens. They've gotta clean up a commercial kitchen, so yeah. But if not, I will get that, um, We'll get that for him next time. So we've made our basting sauce. Let's get our, we're gonna get this. So this chicken, we're gonna put some salt and pepper on it. Cleaning a commercial kitchen. They do all their own. He's working out, he streams out of a restaurant. I'm not putting a whole lot of seasoning on this because that sauce, that's going to be our seasoning. We're going to keep, we're going to keep basting our, our chicken with that sauce. We don't need this. We don't need this. We're going to put this into a bowl. Always keep a bowl in your sink with your hot soapy water. Remember I keep my sink full of hot soapy water, but you have a bowl there that you can see and anything that's sharp goes into that bowl. So when you're reaching in through your sink to pull everything out to throw in the dishwasher, you're not grabbing a knife by the blade. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. I can't even load my dishwasher. I feel you. All right. We'll just get these little pieces in here. And of course, now my hand is dirty. Normally I would salt this the night before. You'll end up with a much better skin. A much better skin. Especially if you're roasting it. Hang on, we're gonna do this in half so that I don't touch this. And I should be able to fit all of that we should be able to fit all that on here, but let me. We're going to give this some Pam cooking spray. This is going to be our dinner tonight. Do I have. No, I don't have my little one anymore. It finally broke. I put it on the grill and I put a too small one on the grill. You had a disappointing lunch. What did you have? Your hair is still looking awesome. Gosh, I wonder why that would be, Belle. I wonder why that would be. I'm gonna put these real thick pieces on the edge. And I'm gonna put the wing right here in the middle next to this little piece here. Did that ding or is it still preheating? It did. Well, all right. Let's get this cleaned up. Del Taco, our Del Taco, um, when we were down in, in California, we had a Del Taco that wasn't like too far from us. And I don't know, I hadn't, I mean, I hadn't been to one in, in years. And they had, um, they used to have a taco burger. 
And then they didn't sell them anymore, so I stopped eating that Del Taco. In fact, if you're not gonna have the, if you're not gonna have the, if you're not gonna have the, um, my favorite thing to eat, well, then I don't want to play anymore. <laughs> I'm like, nope. Del Taco best deluxe chili cheese fries. I haven't even been into town. Ding, I love all the dings. Oh, I'll take leftover pizza. Well, wait, I can't do it because of the cheese. Wah, wah, wah. No, no, hey, I nicked my finger. When did I nick my finger? It's not a deep, it's not a deep nick, it's just. So now you guys can see that this is starting to get a lot thicker. I want this to get a little bit more thicker. We want this to be like a thick paste. So we're keeping this on a, le on, a, on, a on a low to medium heat. Tea sipping elf, 4,000 points, really? You just gotta come in here and just like, drop those and drop them in there like a bomb. You dropped the bomb on me. Shouts and gamer medic. <laughs> I know, it's not, it's not even bleeding, it's just weeping. I wonder if I cut it on the edge of the bone. I never even felt it. Could have been my fillet knife then too. <laughs> never know about that. When those things are sharp, man. <gasps> right? Right? Aren't these just too cute? It's 2,000 a day. That's total was 4,000. Oh, now that's, okay, now it's on. Oh, you guys are going to do, you guys are going to make this happen, aren't you? You guys are going to make this happen. All right, while that is going, that is our mustard. So the only thing we're going to be adding to this is a quarter cup of vinegar at the very end. Um, the water, the dry mustard, and the non-rack. Cook the till the mixture is low. Whisk, then we're going to whisk the vinegar into the mixture and continue to cook until it's thickened to desired. So it could be... A little more vinegar, a little less vinegar. Colleen, thank you so much for that follow. How did you find the stream and where are you watching from? 160 points. Colleen just comes in and goes, hi, I'm here. Pony up. <laughs> Pony up. Texas, good to see you today. Good to see you today. You guys, oh. All right, all right. Our, one of our easiest sauces to make is going to be our tomato sauce. So let's get our, let's get our ranch done. So that can be chilling because I'm going to use my regular commercial mayo for the ranch. But normally the way this was going to play in was we were going to make the mayonnaise, use the mayonnaise to make the ranch, use the ranch to cook with, to dip our chicken into. So it was showing you how you could use all these things here together. I was browsing categories. I seen you were making condiments. I'm in Michigan. I'm in Oregon. We're at opposite ends, but welcome on in. Glad to have you here. We do a lot of different things with food and drink. We do themes on Sundays. Not every month we have a theme. This month it's Star Trek. Next month it will be Julia Child. We'll be redoing uh, some of her TV episodes. Mm, this is starting to smell nami, nami, nami. Oh, we have three, one for each hand and one for the mouth. Kush, thank you so much for that follow. How did you find the channel and where are you watching from? If you guys join the Discord, exclamation point Discord, you can, um, underneath the general channels of where are you from, you can let me know where you're from. I have a pinned post in there that will show you all the pins of everybody who has given me their, I mean, not, you know, general location, not exact location. It's kind of fun. I still request a stone ground mustard. We will do those. I have to do another batch. I will be doing another batch. And maybe we'll be doing that right about the time that we'll be doing the, the uh, hot sauces. Chef Negan recommended. Chef Negan, I love her. I get to see her in November. I don't get to see them in August. The, the, um, the plane tickets was over $2,000 to fly to Boston next month. I don't even know if I have any Band-Aids. Yeah, it is what it is. Then you must have a crab. Yeah, I'm gonna wear my shirt. <laughs> Chef.
Shastal, how are you, Shastal? I just got to put some laundry in. I've, I've got two loads of laundry to do. Did you ever make Julia Child's Floating Island? No, I have not, Crazy Alice. Why are you making sound? Scared me. Oop, and how are we doing on our time for our 21 minutes? And then our eggs are going to go into an ice bath. So anything you do sous vide, particularly meats, because normally what you do with meats is that you sous vide them for a long period of time at like 120, and then you take them out, and then you're going to do a reverse sear. Well, the problem is if once you do a reverse sear, they're already at 120 degrees, they are going to overcook on the inside before you get that nice crust on the outside. So anything that comes out of a sous vide, we usually throw into an ice bath, ice bath right away to stop that cooking process 100% chill it down so that then when you take that steak you get that skillet nice and hot and you're going to sear it for like a minute on one side and a minute on the other that's just enough residual heat to warm it through the center but still keep that beautiful medium rare mm. i knew sous vide in high school dan dan how are the runs going all right so this is getting about as thick as i want because that's that's pretty thick that's pretty thick so we're now going to do our quarter of a cup of distilled vinegar. And I'm going to add this slowly. Slowly, ho ho homicide. Got to tell you, we, we do Christmas a little different around here. We don't, I don't do the, the typical Christmas celebration. I did when my daughter was younger. You know, we did the whole Santa Christmas tree, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but I love true crime. And so we did ho ho homicide last year. That was fun, and I think we'll do it again. We talked about people, last meals on death row. And yes, it's a little bit of the macabre, but it's still food related. Half recipe, yeah, normally it wants a half a cup of distilled vinegar. So we're gonna put in, I'm putting in a quarter cup of vinegar. Yeah, if you were gonna make this, make a big batch, right? If you wanna make a big batch, or you can make a, you know, a, a really big batch of it. But the best thing about it is that you get to customize it however you like it, your flavors. Now this is gonna loosen up again because we're adding in this liquid. So you can see that this is starting, this is getting loose again, you know, but we're gonna be putting it on the stove. Now we're gonna cook it down to more of like the mustard consistency, but not quite, not quite as stiff because once this gets in the refrigerator, it's gonna stiffen up. One of the reasons why it's great watching your channel because I've got the weird, I got the weird stuff going on. I struggled this morning, then vented on Twitter. There you go, Dan. Got to get it out. You got to get it out. I'm going to move that out of the way. Whose grandpa's birthday is it? Wait, are you calling dad grandpa? Wait, it's, today is your grandfather's birthday. What's your grandpa's name? What's your grandpa's name? Let's get some hype up in here. Let's get some grandpa birthday wishes going. Ah, oh, the crab. All the good vibes up in here. Are you going over to see your grandpa today? Or is he coming over to see you? Are you gonna cook him up something deliciousness? Oh, don't splash on Leonardo. Morbid Mistress. I still love that name. I still love that name. Morbid Mistress is like, uh, yeah. Take my points. You'll take my points and you'll like them. Boo boo. I thought we were friends, boo boo. <laughs> I thought we were friends. I am so excited with how the logo came out, how Leonardo's logo came out. All right, so now you can see this is pretty. This is pretty loose now, right? Now we're back to having that weird, that weird liquid consistency. Now we're gonna heat this up. I'm here listening to the, uh, probably to him and my grandma's. He has dementia, okay. Uh, I'm kind of curious as to why minimal movement. Oh, is it, okay, wait, when you say movement, you mean like getting in the car and traveling? Is, is, that, what you, is that what we're going with here? Because that can, that can confuse them when they're not sure where they are and where they're located. Yeah. Yeah. My, my father-in-law had, he developed uh, early onset dementia in his late 70s. 
And then, put that over there. Hey, I still need a little bit more. Come on, get off there. And then of course, when he got into his 80s, it was, we'd have the same conversation, probably five or six times in the course of an hour. And one thing I learned, go where they are. Don't try to correct them. He would talk about World War II a lot. He was a World War II combat vet and was shot and was sent home and still lived the war. But you know the interesting thing, yeah, let me tell you guys something pretty interesting, is as, as the dementia sets in, there's also no filter in what they say. No filter whatsoever on what they say. Good vibes, roll it up. There we go. Roll it up for the, get those, get those happy birthday vibes in here for Shastow's grandpa. All the birthday things in here. All the happy, there we're gonna put this back on the, on the burner for a little bit. And, but when he talked about World War II, which I thought was so interesting, was that he didn't talk about the horrors of World War II. This is one of the reasons why they called him the greatest generation, is that they, they went and did what they had to do. And yes, there was PTSD, there is still PTSD. Uh, hands down, still PTSD. They just dealt with it differently. And they were considered heroes. And then you look at it's like some of our, our veterans from the Vietnam War were treated so horribly when the, when the vets came home. But when he talked about World War II, I have to tell you that he talked about the wonderful villages in France that when they were on K rations, that these villagers would come out and bring them bread and fresh eggs so that each one could have like an egg. How cool is that? He would talk about when they marched into um, Normandy, they were, I think it was two weeks behind the platoon that landed in Normandy and that, you know, Band of Brothers, if you guys have seen Band of Brothers. They were two weeks behind that. And they, they just talked about just how welcoming everybody was. And, you know, here they were, they were walking through worn, torn areas, you know, bombed out and whatever. And, and people were, were still, you know, living. I love all those emotes. Thank you. Oh, I'll take that hydrate, Crazy Alice. Thank you. <laughs> Texas, I love those emotes. Where was he the other day? The other day he was streaming and he was in a museum that had one of his favorite, the Titan dinosaur in it. And I was like, I thought those things were only an arc, the game arc. I didn't realize that they were actual real dinosaurs. I was like, what? That was like, okay, that's a, that's a little on the crazy side. Thank you all so much, yes. He had a stroke a few decades ago, so his movement, is, yeah, so his movement, his speech is probably gonna be limited. Um, that's the hard thing is, is, is when, all this, when all this comes to pass. Let's do our ranch because I want to get out. I want the flavors on this one. I really want to come together because we're going to be using some fresh dill, some fresh parsley. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Here's my fresh parsley. Here's my buttermilk that I made. So this is just, you can see how thick. Guys, this is my regular milk. Can you, I don't know if you guys can kind of see how, how thick this milk is. This is a half a cup of milk and I added about a tablespoon and a half of fresh lemon juice. So I'm able to use my lactose free milk and this gives me my acidified milk, which is like your, your buttermilk. August Charity, Veterans and Canines. And I'm telling you guys, I will have, I'll have more information on that. We'll have commands on that, but this is such a wonderful organization because it's twofold. One, they go into animal shelters and they take dogs out that have to be euthanized. Now they have to undergo a training process and they're screened first, are they, you know, are they a good fit, good temperament? Then they train these dogs to be service dogs to our veterans who are coming home and dealing with you know, various forms of PTSDs and it helps them out. So it's like a win-win type thing. I need to contact the thick, I need to contact the organization. I want to, I want to get a rep to work with um, over there. So I got to contact. I'm going to. I'll do that today after stream. Right now he's in Nebraska, where they're digging for rhino and horse fossils. That is like so cool. That is like so so cool. Okay. I don't have chives. My green onions should still be okay. Oh. Yesterday sitting over there in the chair, minding my own business, doing a little bit of crocheting, and I hear tink really loud. 
a word escapes me. I get up, go to the closet where all my canned goods are, and the search begins. Which one pinged? Which one unsealed while it was in there? I had a, I had a suspicion. It was one of the jars of potatoes. It unsealed and that one had to go in the trash. But I, wanted, I want you guys to understand something that when those, if those jars, any jar unseals, any jar, I don't care what your product is, any jar unsealed, you need to treat it like it's a toxic environment. And let's do this one because it has some skinny ones and let's do this one because it has some skinny ones. So you need to treat it like it's a toxic environment. So you don't take the lid off right away. What I want you to do is I want you to put that jar into a pot. Let's use, what's this one? Let's, well, we'll use these. Into a pot with water, and then I want you to bring it up to a boil. Put a lid on it, and let it, let it slowly boil for at least 20 minutes. Because if I have, now that jar, and the reason why this jar is, why I consider this jar toxic, is that jar sat there for a week and it was, it was sealed. But that means that there was still something funky going on inside there, that it was enough bacteria in there growing that it popped that lid. Now, we know that botulism likes a low acid environment and an anaerobic condition, meaning no air. Well, if the lid popped, isn't the, didn't you break the anaerobic condition? Yes, but if you broke it after the botulism spores were produced, they're still in that jar. So we're gonna boil that, we're gonna let it come down, to, then we're gonna completely let it cool while you're wearing gloves, you're gonna take your trash can, you're going to open up the lid inside the trash can so nothing splashes. You will pour the contents out inside the jar. You can then put your jar back in, back in the water and rinse it out, but we're just aired on the side of caution. Take your gloves off and then discard and get rid of it. Let's get to 100. What's 100? Not 100%. We can't do 100% today. Oh my gosh. Guys. Guys. You guys. Here's my knife. We're probably getting close on our eggs too. 10 minutes on our eggs, 78%? So let's do, we're gonna do this one. I'm only taking off the green parts that I wanna use. We're gonna use this one. I mean, I'll still use these, these white onions. Heck yeah. We're gonna use this one. Because how much of the minced onion do I need? I only need a tablespoon, so we're fine on that. I'll be using these tonight. I forgot I put a hole in here so, so I could get to those, and then I turned around and didn't even use the darn thing. You guys are also nosy. But then again, I did put it up there, right? I did put it up there. Do you guys realize that it will be next Thursday. Oh, maybe it's this Thursday. Maybe it's this Thursday. Hang on. Boo boo. Nardobolo coming in with more points. Oh, he's going to the Mammoth Museum? Oh, I will definitely sure be, be over there for that. Okay, so our mustard here, we're getting to a nice This is looking, because this is going to get thicker as it, as, it, as it chills. This is where we're at now. But before I let it chill down, before I let it chill down, we're going to taste this because we need to taste for salt. This is your last opportunity to start adding in if you need a little bit more vinegar. I think it needs a little bit more salt. So remember when we did our mustard last time, I told you guys that it has to cure. Same for ground mustard. Right now when you taste this, it's gonna taste more horseradishy to you. There's no horseradish in here. But it's gonna taste more horseradishy to you. It's gonna taste spicy. And I'm gonna add a little bit more, I'm gonna add a little tiny bit more garlic to that, not a lot. I mean like, that's it right there. And it's gonna taste, it's gonna taste spicy to you. 
So this is one of those things where you can make it up, put it in the fridge, stick it way in the back, and set your, set your calendar, in, and use it in about a week or two weeks. But it's gonna taste totally different. So when you guys are doing your own stone ground mustards, I want you to taste it the day you make it. I want you to taste it a month later, and I want you to taste it every month. And actually make notes of what the taste is like. You're gonna find a huge difference in there on taste. Love all these. Thank you for that lurk, Lady Arathina. How long to this mustard? This mustard will last quite a while in the fridge. The entire liquid is, is vinegar. So all those dry spices are being hydrated with vinegar and it's just getting sucked up inside of it. Yes, the eggs are still cooking. We have six minutes left on the egg. Then they're gonna go into a water bath. We're gonna cool those down. So we're gonna, we're chopping these up as tiny as we can. Come on, get in there. We're gonna chop, chop, chop these up small. And I'll tell you, I love making my own ranch dressing because I have to be dairy free and this is a way for me to make it dairy free. Boo Boo, I will take that. Thank you so very much. I thought I got the other one, but just in case. Yes, we haven't done the mayo yet. We haven't done the mayo yet. How are you, Mogul? Mogulogi? Mogulogal? I'm trying to think of how, try, I'm trying to think of how that sounds. So we've, we've, we made our chicken basting sauce, which I didn't time, the, I didn't set a timer for the chicken. I'm just gonna go in there and temp it out and see where we're at on that, cause that's gonna be for dinner tonight. But once I see the color starting to change a little bit, we're gonna start basting with our, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, our, our spicy sauce. Did any of you guys, when I did the, the comeback sauce. Did any of you guys make the comeback sauce? I'm telling you, that stuff is just the bomb. The man of the hour is home. I'm gonna let the residual heat continue to cook this. Oh, that's good stuff. Moogle oogle. But I want to say this just like one long fast word. One long fast word. And I want it to come out and sing song. I don't know why. Right? When a name is fun to say, it should be sung. I'm just going to put the mustard in here. I will say this. If you like, if you're thinking the traditional yellow mustard that's French's yellow mustard, this is not it. Not yet. But if you let this sit in the fridge, and I'll put this into like a little small container, like a little tiny mason jar. Oops, let's get all that out. Let's get all that goodness out of there. I shouldn't have put this in the, I just realized I put this into the yellow, the yellow um, bowl. It's like, oh, we're not gonna be able to see that. But and this is this has but this such such a such a fantastic flavor. It's a, a lot richer than your traditional mustard flavors. But as it ages, as it ages, it's not going to be quite as. Where's my where's my thing? It's not going to be quite as. It's not going to have that bite to it. Just like the stone ground mustards I have in there are, are not going to have that bite to it. So we need a little bowl. How are we doing on our time? Still doing three. We need to get a little bowl out to mix up our, our ranch. All my bowls are being used. You know what? We'll just mix it up in this. Let's just do this. We can do this, right? We can do this. We need a quarter cup of sour cream. This is the measuring cup you guys want whenever you have to measure out things like sour cream, honey. Honey is the biggest one that I want to recommend using this for. Sour cream, honey, cream cheese, anything that's liquid. Because when you put it down, the little squeegee thing goes down 
and then when you go to put it, it just squeegees the whole amount up. And on each side, like this one says liquid fill. You guys see where it says liquid fill? That means when you put this down here, this is your liquid fill side. So you would measure a quarter of a cup here on the liquid side. And on this side here is dry fill. So pay attention, you've got to pay attention to that. Scotch bonnet mustard. Oh. Oh, they're seashells. They're seashells. Um, hang on guys, sorry about that. I think I know what that is, thank you. Um, these are from, I don't remember where I got these, but there's, I figure since I'm wearing Leonardo da Vinci on my shirt that I needed to have seashells on today. All the seashells. I mean, if Leonardo's gonna be out here dancing with us, you know, we might as well have the seashells. You know, I should have had mermaids, you know, all the good stuff on there. Suki coming in with more, gosh, you guys. All right, so we need a half a cup of sour cream. So there's our dry solids. Here's our liquid fill. Here is our half a cup of sour cream. 80%, you guys. IT Explorers, how are you doing? I've been great. It is good to see you. Glad to have you back in here. I hope you guys are all having a good summer. I know that summertime, I've, I've seen a lot of streamers kind of posting like, oh, their streams have been slower. And it's like, it's summertime, people are out on vacation. They're going to camping, camping sites and just having a good time over there. 80%, oh my gosh. Oh, I wish I knew how to make tartar sauce. Oh, tartar sauce is very easy to do. Mayo, dill pickles, and some lemon juice. That's about it. If you can get some fresh dill though, fresh dill will really, will really brighten that up. Okay, hang on guys, let's get our, we gotta get our eggs out. I'm gonna turn this off. We're gonna put some ice in here and then I'm gonna chill those eggs down. And then we're just gonna let them sit here for a little bit. You wanna say hi? You already had lunch. You ate your sandwich. Now these eggs are still runny inside, so we wanna make sure that we don't crack them. There's also another trick. So one of my biggest things that I don't really care for sous vide cooking is the plastic that it wastes. Yeah, help yourself. I don't like all the plastic bags that it uses. So if you're just doing something that's veggies and you're using like those food saver bags, cut them a little bit bigger. There we go. Cut them a little bit bigger, put your veggies in there. And I'm, I'm talking about veggies that don't have like a lot of seasonings or brine, just regular old veggies if you're doing veggies. Then rinse the bag out and you can reuse the bag. All those emotes, all those emotes. Dueling needles, how are you doing? I will let him know when he comes back in. He ran, he, he ran off that way. AC's on the blink, no, no. Oh, that sucks when that happens. Okay, I'm picking up the, with the back of the spoon, so I don't have to try and clean out the, but we need a half a cup. Everybody's saying hello to you. Hello. This doesn't have to be like exact. We're also gonna mix a little bit of mayo in here. It's gonna kind of take away that sour. 78 degrees, oh. Yeah, we were 83 in our house yesterday. I thought that was a little too warm. Am I still at my quarter of a cup or half a cup? Down a little bit more, there we go. All right. All right, there is our sour cream. 
And this is another one of those uh, sauces you want to make up early, right? Because we're going to be cutting up the dill. We've cut up our, our green onions. We want those herbs to really infuse this. So this is how this works. This is so cool. I love this. So normally, if you were to scoop this out with a spoon, you know, it would be like, okay, let's get this all out of here. And you have a lot of stuff stuck. But if you have this thing here, it goes all the way up. And you just scrape it all out. And you don't have anything left on the sides. It's, it's, it's completely clean. So you're getting everything that you need to have out of your measuring cup. There's our sour cream. We're only gonna, now I'm only doing half of the buttermilk right now because if I need it thicker, I, don't have, I won't have it too thin. Have a meeting, there you go, don't be late. Don't be late, put on your happy face, always smile. Even if it's a Zoom meeting, even if you're not gonna be seen, smile. It comes through in your voice, it comes through in your voice. Let's get our, I wanna chop these little chive things up a little bit more. Everybody's throwing up the Derek emotes. That just sounded wrong, everybody's throwing up Derek. That's not what I meant. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Y'all know what I meant. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I missed some of the condiments. I will have all the recipes posted in there for sure. So we just finished up the mustard. This was the mustard dually needles. Now, the longer you let this cure, the better it's gonna taste. So if you wanna use this, you, know, you got a nice like barbecue thing going on, make this like a couple weeks before and then That'll be fine. We're making up our, our ranch dressing right now. Then I'm gonna get started on our ketchup. We have our barbecue basting sauce made, and that's already in there, so we're gonna start basting that chicken. And then I'm gonna show you guys how to make a real fast barbecue sauce. That I think you guys will like. It's really good to use this barbecue sauce. How many of you have had a leftover jar of jam that has about Oh, I don't know, maybe three or four tablespoons of jam left in the bottom of the jar. Nobody wants it. It gets shoved in the back of the, of the refrigerator. Use that to make your barbecue sauce. That's gonna be your first base on, on your barbecue sauce. All right, so we also need some dill. We're gonna do about a tablespoon of dill. We're not gonna do the stems. We're just gonna pull the fronds off. Barbecue basting sauce for chicken and mustard has been made. Uh, there were, Bells, how are you? No, I have not made the mayo yet. And guys, we're gonna do the mayo kind of, kind of in a simple format. So I can say this. I have seen it done numerous times. I've seen it done in person. I've never done it. This is how we, this is how we test ourselves, people. Remember, I always told you guys, get out of that comfort zone, do something different. Another thing about making your own ranch dressing, guys, you can make this, if you really like the flavor of dill, add more dill. Hate dill? Use cilantro instead of dill. Your ranch doesn't have to be standard, what is it? Who is it that makes ranch? Hidden Valley? It doesn't have to be their ranch. I can't do it because I can't do milk. So for me, milk, milk is out. Unless, it, unless it's dairy-free milk, but I've never seen sweet condensed milk that's dairy-free. Mayo's one of those condiments that's, you know, it's a good thing to have. And again, you can make it, you can make it more vinegary. You can also experiment with using different oils. You can use olive oil. You can use avocado oil. You can use, uh, we're just gonna be using a, a plain vegetable oil for this one. Well, that's okay. You're not required to remember my dietary concerns. Go to, oh, they do? Now that would be kind of cool. I would try that. I would actually try that. I think what we're gonna need to make though here next month is we're gonna have to be making some ice cream. What do y'all think? I think we need to make some homemade ice cream. Now this looks like a lot of, this looks like a lot of dill on here, but this is one tablespoon of fresh minced dill or cilantro. So when I cut this down, it's gonna compact, it's gonna get smaller. I may need to actually add to this. They make coconut milk condensed milk. You know, the only thing I also, I've also tried to find just coconut cream 
like, like the canned coconut cream. The only thing they sell in my store, they sell two different brands of coconut milk, basically, and that's about it. But I gotta make, I gotta make some trips, so I may be stopping by a couple of Asian stores on the way home. I'm stocking up. My dad's picky about, he only likes Best Foods mail. So Best Foods mail, if you go to the East Coast, is Hellman's mail, mail, same company. West Coast, it's called Best Foods. East Coast, it's called Hellman's Mail. And it's good mail. I wish we had an Asian store. We do need an Asian store. Twitch lover coming in with that dancing crab rape. So, oh, that's what I was gonna do. I was checking on my calendar. Hang on, let me. Oh. I gotta go to, okay, go to the month. Okay. So, one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. Tomorrow's eight weeks. Gourmet Chef Panda, did you send over your link for your charity to, to Miss uh, Berry Minty Berry? I would like to poke you. I'd like, I'd like to. Oh, wow. That, 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 that's, <laughs> okay. So, um, focusing. We'd like to post that for you. Bell, shush. Bell. Go to your room. Go to your room, Bill. <laughs> Go to your room. Gosh darn it. <laughs> I cannot be held responsible for what comes out of my mouth on stream. Bobby. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm going to come over here and unplug this. We're going to check our sauce. <laughs> See how our sauce is going over here. <laughs> you guys. Where's my glove? I do that darn thing. You guys are, oh, you guys are just craziness. Craziness. Okay, our sous vide eggs are resting. Our chicken is probably just about getting done. But what I am going to do is I'm going to drain some of this liquid off because I'm going to be adding that barbecue sauce to it. And I want this to get some nice crispy stuff. So we're going to flip this over. We're going to baste it with our Spicy sauce, gotta have that spicy, spicy going on. Where is my little, let's get out our tongs. <sighs> Barry, Barry, don't make me put you in a timeout, young lady. <laughs> Lord of Bellows. Do you know they did that to me on round table and they kept playing it over and they, they put it into a loop over and over and over again. You guys, you guys are just deplorable. You guys are just deplorable. Just deplorable. I can't take you anywhere. That's it. You know what? Everybody in the car, we're going home. Everybody back in the car, we're going home. Okay, so I'm just gonna mix up this basting sauce here a little bit. Oh, that smells good. Get this all nice and get the sides. Oop. And I'm gonna keep it up on top of there because it'll keep it hot. Back in you go. 83%. Another 2,000. Holy schmoly. I cannot believe. Oh, Lord Velos. I was, I had no idea they were going to do that. That was, that was just, um, yeah. Kamita family. Just make a coconut. No, just make an account. Just make a account. I read coconut. I got all excited. I was like, coconut? I want coconuts. All right. Our homemade buttermilk. Sour cream. Oh, we need some, we need a couple tablespoons. A couple tablespoons of mayo. Because we haven't made our mayo yet, we're going to use some commercial mayo because this way, if my eggs don't come out the way I want them to. So this is one of those sauces that you can make however you want. You want it a little bit more on the sweet side, add a little more mayo. 
You want a little bit more on the tangy side? Take your mayo, cut it in half. You can make it however you want. This is what coconut sounds good. Coconut always sounds good. You can make these sauces. That's the, that's the beauty of making your own condiments, of making your own ranch, making your own ketchups, is you can make them how you like them. The recipe that we're gonna be doing for the ketchup is like a Heinz 57 recipe. Avocado oil, there you go. What's that song? What's that song? A, a lovely something of... There's a song on there. This is a hinkle. This is my, this, oh, this is my chef knife. Yes, you can do yogurt. If you'd rather use yogurt instead of sour cream, you can. But you'll use, you'll use less buttermilk. I need to get a new one. This one has been with me for many, many years. And over being sharpened, I even took it into a gentleman to sharpen it um, several years ago. It started, the blade started to get down to the divots. I got to get a new knife. I just don't want to spend the money on it right now. A lovely bunch of coconuts. That's it. Barry's reading my mind. All right, so we have our cilantro in here. We're gonna get one clove of garlic in here. I'm gonna Whoa, we're gonna press that through. To me, doing chef's knives, I won't order them online because I have to hold the knife in my hand. Does the handle fit good in my hand? Do I have control of the blade? Is it, I don't want it too heavy. There were, I don't remember what the brand knife is, but it's all one piece. The blade and the handle is all one piece. And the handles have like these little dimples in them, which, so if you got, if your hands were kind of wet, it gives you that gripping thing, but they're hollow. I felt like I was gonna throw that knife through the ceiling every single time. 22 people using full points to get us to the end. Oh, gadzooks. Okay, so it wants me to put these through a press. We'll put these through a press. I think I have the same at home that my girl uses. Okay. I love them. I absolutely love them. I will say I like the fact of how they retain um, the shape. I was reading on, I was reading on a, a blog, but I think it was an older blog, and this was back in the 1950s, and I don't know if they are still around, uh, was a knife company that was in France, based out of France that apparently made some phenomenal, absolute phenomenal um, chef's knives that really kept their edge. Queen sugar buns, how are you doing? Coming in and dropping those points. Lex, thank you so very much for popping in over here. I appreciate you being here so very much. I don't know if I'm gonna need any more uh, but you know what I do want to add to this? Uh, I, want, I want that fresh kick of acid in there. Let's add some... Let's add a, li a lime. Yeah, let's add a lime. Am I colorblind today? Fresh kick of acid. Got to have that good acid going in there. Because think about this. We've got this yogurt, milk fat, mayo, vegetable oil fat, yolk fat, all those fats are hitting our tongue and that's going to quickly coat our tongue by hitting it with that splash of acid. That's going to help. Remember we always talk about what, what acids do to your palate. It, it takes all that heavy fattiness that's, that's coating the entire, the entire inside of your palate, lifts it up. So when you take that bite again, you're like, Oh, this still tastes like really, really good. Thank you for that follow. Wait a minute. Not, no, not the follow the 1590 points. Five, nice to see you with your 4,000 points. Okay, oh, okay, okay. If we hit it today, I won't be able to do it on, oh, we have Friday though. Okay, yeah, we could, we could do it on Friday. If, if, we hit it, if we hit it today, we can do it on Friday. I won't do it, well, no, maybe I will. Oh, okay, hang on here. I think that was the only, yeah, that's the only. Oh my gosh, you, oh, yeah. You guys are just getting me all flustered over here. You guys are dropping points. Like you guys are at a casino throwing quarters into a slot machine. You guys are like, over here, just shut up and take my money. Shut up and take my money. 
telling y'all. So we need to get we need to get Panda and his girlfriend over to the states. <laughs> 